Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, your daily fix of football chat here on STV. Uh, the main talking points tonight, Rangers manager Mark Warburton says he's going nowhere despite the link with Fulham. And Budge says Hearts will stay at Tynecastle with plans to develop the old main stand. There's a manager of the month for Alan Archibald and a player of the month for Michael O'Halloran. Just a few of the topics we'll be discussing on tonight's programme. Alan Ruff joins me, Peter Martin, and I'm delighted to say Falkirk's Will Vox is our boot room guest this evening. So lots to talk about on the programme, especially Falkirk. Um, but first of all, it's one of those stories that's uh, just gone on day after day, Ruffy. You know, is it Fulham that are interested? Is it a wee bit of PR here and there? You can never quite work it out. In the end, Mark Warburton became exasperated with a story that was growing arms and legs and he put out on his Twitter last night that um, he's going nowhere and he, he thinks it's disrespectful to not only himself but Rangers and Fulham. Yeah, but that's what it, the way it is in football. You know, if there's speculation, it must be coming from somewhere. Uh, obviously, it's very well regarded down south. We've been at Brentford. Uh, I think he's still got a job to do at the Rangers. I, I personally don't think he's been tested yet. I think he will be tested when he gets into uh, the bigger league. But uh, if he's done enough to impress uh, people down there, who's to say what they might do? But I think he's really got to clear it up because Rangers are on the up and they need to let the fans know if he's going to be there for the long term. Well, you can't get any more succinct than I'm going nowhere. Yeah, but there hasn't been. I don't. Well, I don't think there's been anything on the table. You know, I don't think there's been that phone call. It'd be interesting. All right, saying it. Uh, yes, I'm not going anywhere. But if they were to make an official bid, and uh, it was by all accounts that people are you know, allowed to go and speak to them. It'd be interesting to see what was on the table. We, we heard John Hughes saying that he was disappointed. He never got the chance to talk to Dundee United. So, if he's really made up his mind uh, to sign, then. I'm sure the new contract that's on the table will be signed very quickly and then that'll be put to bed. Yeah, OK. Um, I'd just like to clear the air now. Will Vox is not going to join Real Madrid despite <laughs> uh, increasing speculation now. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great, Will? Be all right, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, don't say it'll be all right. That, that's a headline. <laughs> I'd love to join Real Madrid. That's the way it works. Uh, of course, you guys, uh, Falker, could put the scuppers on Rangers and Hibs uh, title aspirations because we genuinely feel that you guys have been disregarded, although you're still in the hunt. Yeah, uh, I think a lot of people have written us off just because of how strong Hibs and Rangers are, but I think that suits us perfectly. Um, the more people that write us off, I think the better. Uh, we've got you know two big games coming up. We've got back-to-back -back Hibs away and then Rangers at home, so uh, it'll be a tough test, but if we can sneak a few points out of them, then we'll see. Do you feel that you guys have the match of them in any given game? Or let me put it another way, do you feel not only do you have uh, the beating of them in one game, but can you sustain it over the season? Do you see enough in that squad? Yeah, I think uh, we showed it last season against Hibs especially. Um, we've done very well in the in the four games and then obviously the, the semi-final. Um, Rangers are obviously a very strong team, but you know we went to Ibrox and 45,000 people there whatever big occasion and... You know, until the 78th minute or whatever it was, um, which my opinion was a poor decision, but um, you know we stood up and we, we were more than in the game. So I think we've showed that, but it's good enough saying that we've got to go and actually take points off the two of them, and we haven't so far, but I think we've been unfortunate. Yeah, has, has the manager uh, needed to instil the confidence in you guys? Uh, has he mentioned the fact that listen, you know they're all writing us off. We've got a chance to win the title, or is it is it just basically let's keep it in the playoffs? Yeah, he's not really like that. The gaffer, um, he just keeps it very calm. Just keep going the way we are. Um, very much takes it as you know the next game, um, Livingston on Saturday. Uh, that's what he's interested in at the moment. He's not interested in those two coming up. Um, so no, it's very calm, we're not thinking about the title or anything like that, we're just trying to win as many as we can and you know, at some point we'd like to think the two of them will have a little a little slip in the form. As I was going to say, has, has the disappointment of the Cup last year been an inspiration for you to, to get back in there and get to the top? I don't know if it's been an inspiration for that, um, but I think it's helped definitely. Um, such big occasion and so much press, so much um, hype about the game that I think that's kind of 
made us able to deal with the big occasions of obviously Ibrox and, and going to Hibs. So it can only help us. It was tough at the time, but it can only improve us as a squad, I think. Yeah. Are you a better side this season than you and mine will? Yeah, I think this is the best best side we've had, certainly since I've been at the club. Um, we've got <coughs> a lot of strength in depth. We've got a good mix of you know youth and experience. We're still a young team, but we've got that bit of you know we've got Mark Kerr, we've got Lee Miller, we've got John Baird, we've got Dave McCracken. That's a good spine of experience there, alongside you know really good young players. Uh, and you mentioned one player there, Ruffy and I are head to head on it. I'm just <laughs> wondering, you know, obviously you're going to supply him at some point. I've got yeah. Beardy down to score 25 goals this season. I'm, I'm worried. You hit four at the weekend. He didn't get one of them. Um, has has he shown any kind of lack of confidence in the dressing room? <laughs> uh, I think you should know Birdie better than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have any lack of confidence, that's for sure. But um, he's got two hat tricks already this season, so mm. I think he might have a chance. Yeah. Um, he's looking sharp, and so we'll see. Yeah, well, I always remember during the game, you know, Birdie looks the best option. Have a look about. Yeah. You know, yeah. try other options. You don't have to keep getting at him all the time. <laughs> I think it's one on one. <laughs> If that, you'd never believe it, Ruffy, if that happens <laughs> on Saturday, he'll look at him and think, no, <laughs> it could happen. Uh, uh, of course, listen, uh, you know, great for yourself as well because you're part of a, a team of players that are all, you know, at times individually. Craig Sybil, John Baird scoring the goals, got 13 already. Um, uh, you know, a lot of people are looking at the talent that you've got in that side as well. Yeah, there's a lot of talent in the team and has been for the last few seasons. Um, um, you know, we've made a lot of money over over the last three years from selling on players. So that's from good young players as well that have come up. A few from England, but most from the academy. So I'm doing really well in that aspect. Um, and as you say, with the goals we've scored, every outfielder that's played. Uh, apart from two, but they've not really played, they've scored a goal, so we're scoring from everywhere as well as Birdie getting 13, but you know, if we were relying on just strikers, I think at some point they'll have a little drought and uh, everyone else has chipped in. Yeah, I know the gaffer hasn't mentioned it to you, but do you guys believe that the title is a realistic chance? Um, I think we've got to really, we've got to believe that, I think we definitely think we can compete with those two head to head, so if you believe that, then you've got to, got to believe that you know we can, we can challenge them. I just think they've got Bigger squads. That's the only thing that you know might come into it. It's came into it in the last uh, few years. The year when Dundee won the league, we really should have won that league, and that was due to the squad. We had players playing out of position and hardly any cover. We've got more of that this year. Um, but yeah, I think we're confident as a bunch of lads, definitely. If you were, if you were going to get into the playoffs, would would you feel comfortable about taking? the teams that are in the bottom half of the SPFL? Yeah, I think so. Um, I know we had a big slip up against Ross County, but um, that was just really a bizarre night. Um, but we played Partick, beat them, um, you know, really competed with Inverness last season in the, in the cup final. I think probably Hibs and Rangers are just as strong as those, if not stronger, to be honest. So getting out of the league in you know the second and third playoff was probably harder than actually the last one, maybe. Yeah, and with that in mind, if the league is beyond you, do you do you get slightly miffed at everybody talking about it? You could be just a head-to-head between Rangers and Hibs. Do you feel as if you'll have a major say on maybe somebody's title aspirations in those two clubs? I think we really don't mind it. The more that gets spoke about those two uh, and the less about us, the better. I think that's the way it worked with the Scottish Cup last year. Everyone, you know, we weren't even really talked about at all until the final. Um, so uh, we're happy with that and the gaffers certainly happy with that. Um, they can think all that want, all they want and then let us see what happens. Yeah, and I detect a really strong uh, Liverpool accent in the background now because obviously there'll be a Scottish influence on you now, Will, but uh, I'm amazed that you're neither a red or a blue. What happened? Uh, I know, it's my dad's fault. Um, he was from County Durham, so brought me up a Newcastle fan, so Shiro was my, my hero growing up. Um, I've kind of fell out of love with them now because they're useless, but... <laughs> <laughs> I was a massive Newcastle fan, yeah. Yeah, it's so unusual. I mean, it must be unusual down in that area as well, <laughs> Ruffy, to walk about with a Newcastle shirt on in the world. certainly would, but I can see why his dad would support Newcastle because mm. you mentioned Alan Shearer. They're a wonderful club. Must be a great atmosphere in that stadium mm. when it's full. Yeah, they're losing it at the moment, though. The fans aren't turning up and they're struggling. Yeah, was he your hero, Alan Shearer, as a boy? Was that what it was all about for you? You wanted to be the goal scorer? Yeah, uh, that was it, really, for me. Shearer was the man. Uh, I had him on every top. 
up that I ever had and out in the garden with my brother I'd be celebrating Shearer and doing his his celebration so no he was definitely my my hero okay um we will talk more with will about Falkirk. we're also going to talk about uh manager of the month which should please uh ruffy uh, of course uh, alan archibald picking that award up we'll get uh, ruffy's thoughts on that and we'll also talk about the player of the month uh in michael o'halloran uh that's all to come <coughs> in the next part of the program on uh, peter and ruffy's football show join us in in the second part, if you can, Will Vox is our boot room guest. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin. Our boot room guest is Falkirk's Will Vox. Uh, bad news, Ruffy. We're down to 52 in the FIFA World Rankings. Mm -hmm. uh, slipping badly. Yeah, I think it's because we don't uh, play the, the games that get you up. You know, I think we, we tend to play quite competitive games. Uh, I think Gordon goes out of his way to, you know, take games on that we're going to be tested, whereas other other countries play we friendlies against whoever. I love the you way know. you I love the way you managed to spin that, Ruffy, but we only managed to beat Gibraltar. Everything else went pear shaped. Yeah, because we're so. playing against good sides. I don't think there are other sides out there. If you're gonna tell me that we are in the ranking that we are where we are and yeah. some of the teams that are underneath us that we aren't better than them then yeah. are you not buying into this fifa thing no i'm not i don't no. buy into that because there are teams that are below us that i know that if we played them in a one-off we'd beat them quite easily but the important thing is obviously where you are with the rankings when when the seeds come out and big tournaments but the yeah. next big tournament's out you know and uh, we know where we are yeah uh, trinidad and tobago Guinea, they're ahead of us. Yeah, I would like to think we'd beat Guinea. <laughs> <laughs> really, I just wanted to get a, a sense of how far we've dropped in this. Uh, of course, uh, Will, you'll be a, a, a die-hard England fan. Do you fancy England to win the European Championship? <laughs> no, being honest, no, I don't. Um, I think maybe, you know, the young players they've got now have got a chance in two years or four years time um, so got a great great bunch of young players but I don't think they're ready yet for the tournament yeah as an individual yourself every footballer has ambitions you mentioned your love of Newcastle but is there a is there a, a driving ambition and a burning ambition within you now to, to, to make it to the highest level first of all first and foremost with Falkirk but then again to take it on even further yeah of course there is um, I'm just enjoying my football though but I, I do want to obviously play as high as I can uh, you get a taste for playing every week, though, so um, I definitely want to wouldn't want to give up that to go, you know, down somewhere and and being a you know reserve team setup or anything like that. Um, but yeah, of course, you want to play as high as you can for as long as you can. I always I always thought it was hard to deal with that. Like when I was at Partick Thistle, we knew that somebody had to move on every year to balance the books, and yeah. when somebody actually <laughs> moved, and you thought it was maybe your turn, you know, <laughs> you would go, "Damn, I'm here another year." <laughs> but so it must be a Falkirk, you know, with the players who leave, and you see them going on to bigger things, and. You yeah. know, as a temptation, there's, there's, there isn't no doubt about it. It's surely yeah. an inspiration, though. You know, yeah, you yeah. I think <coughs> you look at Craig Sibold, um How he's not moved on, I don't know. Um, but <coughs> Falkirk have had a really good record of getting rid of young players. Uh, a lot of them up from the academies, which a few of the fans obviously have the grumbles about because we, we'd have some team now if we'd have kept all of them. But it's not the way it works anymore in Scotland, and you have to sell players to to make money, as you say, and. Uh, we've done that really well now, and you know the club's starting to settle and uh, going in the right direction because yeah. of it. Yeah, absolutely. A um, <clears throat> couple of awards have been handed out, Ruffy. Uh, one of them, your old team, mm -hmm. Alan Archibald, he gets Manager of the Month. Um, it's been a difficult time prior to picking up that award. You know, certainly September, October. I think we were wondering where they were going to get wins from, but they just, he just seems to have been able to turn it around. Yeah, they're really pleased for them. You know, it has been hard, not just this season, but the last two seasons. They've been down the bottom there and, you know, just trying to stay away from that playoff position. And he, he deserves all the credit going about. He has the ability to win the games that matter. And we've said it all along on the show on a Saturday. If you can get two, two games back to back, six points, it can take you up. If there were another one, if they win another one at the weekend, they're touching top six. It just shows you, you know, how, how difficult it is, you know in that league so yep with the budget at his disposal uh, 
great for me. Yeah, I know Kenny Dalglish will say there's no such a thing as a six-pointer, but uh, mm-hmm. Partick Thistle, Motherwell, suddenly, uh, you know, it really has got that edge to it at the weekend. That bottom six is cutthroat. Yeah, it is. Uh, I don't think you could uh, split the two of them. It'll be on the day, you know. Obviously, Partick Thistle have got Doolan firing on all cylinders. They're, they're now scoring goals now. And they've got the confidence <coughs> for the Kelly game. But I think Alan and the players will know it's going to be a tough one because Mark's got them looking if you know, they're going to start picking up points. So it'll be a great game to go to. Yep. And uh, Michael O'Halloran, um, he's one of those guys that just... Suddenly, this season, he's just come to life. I mean, he, he was the absolute star in the game against Rangers as well, but he's just managed to keep that consistency off you. Yeah, I just saw the highlights last week there. Even the, his assist for the goal uh, in the midweek game, the pace that he had to go by the defender. And, and once he was in the box, the defender just couldn't touch him. You know, he had to let him put, deliver the ball in, and that's what he's good at. And as a wide player, you know... It's, all right, we know he can score goals, but I would love to know how many assists he has in most of the games he plays in. Yeah, is there a particular player in the the, the Premiership that's excited you that you've you've looked at and thought, yep, yeah, I like what he does? Um, I think O'Halloran's got a bit of everything. To be fair, uh, he's quick, he's strong, um, he's direct, he makes things happen. So I, I'm not surprised. To be fair, that he's got he's got Player of the Month. Um, every time I've seen him, he's looked bright and. Uh, seems to be, you know, causing a bit of a stir. And if you couldn't pick one of your own teammates, well, <coughs> who would you pick if you were looking at a championship player of the year right now? Can't pick my own teammates. That's tough. Um, from what I've played against, um, struggling here. Gonna have to go with Tavernier. You, you can't really, I think, go with anyone else for the amount of goals he scored and scored a good set piece, piece against those. He didn't actually have the best day against those, but um, the highlights I've seen, he's so direct. Um, and to score what he scored, nine or ten, whatever it is, from from right back is an achievement in itself. Yeah, I, I'm struggling to pick Ruffy from the three of them <coughs> at the moment. I mean, I'm looking at Cummings will definitely be in there. He's mm-hmm. gathering it. I mean, I, I'd be part pressed of John Baird if he kept scoring goals wouldn't be mentioned but you've got Tavernier as, mm-hmm. as well mentioned as well and you know Wycorn out in front yeah I'll come from these three teams uh, particularly when up there I think that they've all got something to offer I think something spectacular will happen before the end of the season and uh, I'm sure it'll be somebody from one of these clubs yeah uh, would it be disheartening for you guys Will uh, you know because <coughs> Rangers and Hibs are talking about strengthening in that January transfer window a club like Falkirk, sometimes there's a fear that you will be cherry-picked, you know, one of your players, and then all of a sudden you're weaker. Yeah, I mean, that can <coughs> happen, but um, I would have thought Rangers and, and Hibs won't be coming for, for players from us. I would have thought they'd be going for proven kind of experienced players that they want. Um, I know we've got a few of them, but uh, if that happens, then so be it. But you can't really do anything about it from our point of view. Um, Falkirk's going to be a selling club for the next few years, and that's the way it works. But, you know, you can bring in signings and they get injured after a month anyway or, or don't hit the ground running. So I wouldn't say we're fearful of that yet, no. Yeah, uh, one piece of really <coughs> good news, I think, certainly from my point of view, Ruffy, I like uh, to see uh, clubs stay at their spiritual home. And Anne Budge has mentioned at the AGM that Hearts are going to stay at Tyne Castle and develop the old main stand, which I, I just mm-hmm. think is fantastic. Yeah, I think it's fantastic as well. Uh, we all know the atmosphere that it creates in that stadium. The, the main stadium is a bit tarnished now, and it'd be great if they could get it up like the other three. And it'd be a, again, it'd be a fantastic uh, for footballers to play in. Yeah, you know, it'd be a great, a great yeah, arena. Were you, were you unhappy? <laughs> were you unhappy with that pen, Robbie? No, I just. <laughs> <laughs> but it would, it would be a fantastic uh, arena to play in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and if they can get, I think they're still trying to buy a bit of land. Uh, there's still deals to be done to secure all the land to make sure that they can redevelop it in the right way. Uh, up at 20,000, though, roughly, I thought it, they might have gone for a, a wee bit more. I'm almost certain there are Harps fans out there. If they were successful, they could fill that easily. Yeah, well, they're up at, I think it's around about 16,000 just now. Yeah, you would have thought, you know, maybe another 6,000 uh, wouldn't be a problem. But uh, it'd be interesting to see what they're going to do while they're, they're rebuilding it, you know, yeah. what they would do. I'd love to see you guys f- fill in the fourth area as well. I think there's, there are plans afoot. Yeah, I think, if I'm understanding it right, there was originally plans to put it in, but then funding and something to do with the nuclear plant that's around it within yeah. the blast zone. Uh, but that's now changed. Um, 
you know, it would be nice to get that up. I think, personally, if I could have chosen or designed a stadium, I would have taken a, a height off each of the thing and put it on the, the other side because, yeah. you know, you see the pitches and if you're playing left back for the time, you know, you're running against a fence and no one wants that in, you know, in a game of football. So if we could, that'd be brilliant. And the thing is, can you fill it? That's the problem. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about what you do on the pitch. Uh, what's your favourite ground to play in, Will? Well, you mentioned Sandcastle, and I think the best atmosphere I've played in was there, I would say, in our 3-2 win, um, <coughs> to stop their unbeaten run. Um, I think I just, it was full house, so 16, I thought it was 18,000, but 16,000, um, and it was so loud. That was louder than the cup final, I would say. Yeah. Um, so that was a great atmosphere. Your fans are so close to you. Um, but iBox has been brilliant as well, to be fair. Yeah, well, well it's been an absolute joy talking to you. Uh, I'm so delighted you remind me there's a nuclear plant right across from the open area at Falkirk. We'll need to watch that, Ruffy, when we go there the next time around. Uh, we wish you all the very best of luck for the rest of the season. Well, Vox, yes. our boot room guest, absolutely delighted to have a chat with them from Ruffy and myself. Thanks for watching.